Hey guys, it's Teresa Crane with Jeremiah Dreams. How's everyone doing? I bet you thought, is she going live again or not? So here's the thing. I am helping with um, my, my girls, my daughter and my granddaughter. Um, as it gets closer and closer to baby time and just life is just at a different rhythm right now. So um, I last night went live with my VIP group and I wanted to show y'all a couple of things. Well, one thing in particular that we're doing, it's kind of a cool, cool um, exercise and lesson. I thought y'all might enjoy seeing something about that. Um, and life is just different right now <laughs> with a three-year-old. It's, it is very busy, very challenging. And there's a reason why young people have babies. <laughs> But as you join, please grant StreamYard permission to display your name so we can visit and talk. And let me see if I can adjust this one light that's uh, creating a glare. Maybe I can move it a little bit and that'll be a little bit better. We'll see. Who knows? I don't know. But I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you've had a good day. Uh, like I said last night, I went live with my VIP group and we're doing some cool things in there. Hey, Teresa, how are you, lady? I hope you've had a good day. Um, I want to show y'all though what we what we worked on because it was really cool. Um, let me get it over here and share my screen. Hey, Miss Sue. So y'all, we were doing. Hey, Winifred, how are you? We in this um this last uh, VIP session. I just I just thought I would show, share this with y'all. We have been learning how to paint something that looks like glass. How do you um, do the outlining and the effects so that it looks like something is actually in glass? So let me hold this up just a little bit so it's not in such an angle. So this was the exercise. We have a jar full of gumballs is kind of what it's representing. And so we put the gumballs in there, but then we took... Um, the shadowing and the shading and the blending effect to make the things look like glass. So this really wasn't a piece that was about um, making a scene or painting something to necessarily be a completed object. This is more of an exercise of learning a technique, learning how to look, what is glass? What I mean, like we have this, um, so we have, I, I sent them two things. First, I sent them this pattern to use as an outline, but then I sent them an image of a glass jar. So you're starting to look at, hey, Marie. Hi, my friend, Rena. How are you, ladies? Uh, so you start looking at how things are outlined and what color are the different areas in the jar to make it look like glass. And then to put something within it and it... Um, have that effect of being inside the glass is is a real trick so this was what we came up with and i'm going to do a another tutorial for them because we did this one together uh in kind of a live thing within our private group but uh, i just thought it was really cool just a neat thing to learn so there's not a lot of background or anything because the exercise truly was painting a jar, making it look like glass, and thinking about what the different shapes and shadows and colors are. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. I thought it was a kind of a neat thing, and I thought you might find it interesting. And I'm going to open up my, um, my group probably again the end of next month, but we're going to do a workshop before that. So I've been thinking about that, and I, I'm thinking that we're going to do it after the baby's born and I'm leaning toward um, maybe somewhere around the third week of May. I'm going to know a little bit more after this week probably, but it's swirling around in my brain and thinking, what are we going to do, you know, and how would I structure it and all that good stuff. So I just thought I'd let y'all know it's coming. It's just a matter of the baby. Hey, Miss Emmy, how are you, my friend? I am so glad you're here. There's my friend, Chicky. Hey, girly. I hope you're doing good. So, you guys, did you see my post about the cards? They're now available in my Etsy shop. 
and I am just tickled to death. These are really, really good quality cards. They have a very nice feel. I'm very pleased with the print job that they did, and um, I just couldn't, I just couldn't be happier. I, I just couldn't. So if you haven't seen that, oh, good. Hey, Teresa. Thank you, girl. Yeah, I'm going to start taking names here in a minute. Uh, so thank you very much. You're always my good reminder, Teresa. So I want to make sure y'all saw that. And I'm just so excited. It's just such a neat thing. But anyway, I have my little pieces of paper. Oh, here they are. Um, so there's some of you going to be getting some happy mail. Some things went in the mail yesterday and it's going to be fun. So y'all let me know when you get it. So here's some things I can show y'all. Except and it's in the other room. So no, I can't show you tonight. I'll show you sometime. Some of the cool things that I've picked up to send y'all for Happy Mail. Um, I have stencils. I have rub-on transfers. What else is in that bag? Um, stickers that, you know, I think that I would enjoy. So hopefully it all, all is exciting to y'all. Sometimes I send uh, paint brushes or canvases or cool things to paint on. Anything I send you Happy Mail wise is gonna about be gonna be about being creative. So just know that. Um, so when we are writing down all these names, I'm trying to make it something very very fun, very creative centered, uh, because that's what I'm all about. Y'all, I have to tell you, I have no makeup, no makeup. So y'all are seeing me all natural here. Um, no, there's no time for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I just, well, I, I meant to preface that earlier and then I got off on other things, but um, let's see here. So if you paint the blessings, okay, I tell your friends, or if you hit that heart emoji down by the comment bar, let me know in the comments that you did that because I have to figure out who I'm going to send happy mail to. And let's see here. So Teresa, well, my pen doesn't want to write, so we're going to get a different pen. Let's try, let's try this one. I might have to get me some in here. Let's see. Well, that's not going to work either. Hang on. I bet it, this is just needing, I'm, I'm writing on too soft of a surface. Let me slide over. Yes, that's exactly what's wrong. All right. So if you're just now joining, I did not. Um, hey. Hey, Linda. Oh, I love seeing y'all's names. Y'all just warm my heart. I hope you know that. Um, so last night I went live with my VIP group. So that's why I didn't come on here last night. Okay, Teresa Rudd. Let me get you down, girlfriend. So what have y'all been doing today? I've kind of been gabbing, gabbing about my, my stuff. So tell me, what are you guys into? Did you have a good day? Let's see here. Who else do I need? Linda. I got to get Linda down. Let's see here. I got Teresa. Your peaches survived the spring coat. Oh, Chicky, thank you. Winifred. I got to get Winifred down. Let's see here. Make sure. So, Winifred, I got to put you down twice. All right. I think I've got everybody so far. Scrolling back through the comments here. Let's see here. I got Teresa. Teresa has been crafting. Marie. I get Miss Marie down. All right. All right, and Miss Emmy, I hope I'm saying your name right. I have a friend who has a little girl that has a name, or that's how she says her little girl's name, but hers is spelled just a little bit different. Um, 
So I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. I know um, her name is Ashley. The mom's name is, and her Emmy is hilarious. I mean, the things that she puts on Facebook, the antics that her little girl is up to is uh, hilarious. So Miss Rena, she started her owl painting. Oh my goodness. And you had to work yesterday or today. I'm sorry. Oh, good, Emmy. Thank you. I appreciate that because I, I want to. I want to get it right. Well, you guys, I let's um, be sure and and see if we've got more names to add at the end. So um, I want to get back on. I bet y'all thought she's she's abandoned that. No, 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 no. I want to get. To, I want this one to to work out really nicely. So I think though tonight I want to focus on the basket. That's what I've got in my mind. So I'm going to start with some darker colors. Let me get my water situated for rinsing my brushes. I thought I had it all together. You had to go to your office for the fourth time in a year. You finished a painting tonight. Teresa, I want to see it, girl. I would love to see that. Rena, you be sure and show me your owl when you, um, when you get to a point that you're comfortable to share it with me. I am very interested, very interested. All right, so let's see here. What shade? I don't think I want this rich brown. I'm feeling, because that's the color I used for this um, table. Let me see what else I've got. And I was thinking, this reminds, this takes me back to my childhood when we would gather the produce from the garden. And we had some peach trees, but we primarily had apples. And my granddaddy had this really big, I mean, and it, I'll never forget, it was huge. It was a cider press and it was painted black and it had the big manual screw thing that presses the apples down. Um, Emmy says she took today easy. Your silly self forgot to put the silicone thing. Oh, into the hot glue. Not fun. I know that's not fun. And you got a boot painted to make a planter. Oh, how cool. And tonight, Teresa, I did not know you crochet. That is cool. Um, Linda drove to Crittenden, Kentucky, and to Florence. Planted tomato plants and flowers. Oh, there's nothing like fresh tomatoes. Homegrown fresh tomatoes and flowers. I haven't even done that yet. Crittenden, Kentucky. Is that around Marion, by chance? I've heard of Florence, but I can't visualize where in Kentucky Florence is, Linda. But I'm going to have to look that up on the map and see how far away from Hickory you were. Let's see here. Okay. All right. So let me find my brown that I want to do. I've got a light brown I'm going to use. But there's another brown that I've got. I, really can't think of I think this is it right here. I just had to get it out of the shadows. So this is a dark chocolate brown um, that I'm going to start with for sort of the, is before you get to Louisville. Oh, okay. Okay. My son is in um, academy, police academy in Richmond. So he's closer to Lexington, but he's in that neck of the woods. All right. Oh, I was telling y'all. So my granddaddy had this, um, cider press and we did have apple trees um and i remember oh as a kid i hate you guys i swore i'd never have a garden i want you to know to this day i've never had a garden we had we didn't have gardens growing up we had like fields and they called them gardens and i did not get to sleep in during summer breaks because i had to be out in the cucumbers picking cucumbers and um Oh my goodness, we did green beans, potatoes, watermelons. We did several variations of beans. And the thing is, we would uh, like purple whole peas. And oh, y'all, it was never ending this garden thing. And we would put a lot of it up ourselves, but then we would sell it by the bushel. And it was back when you could put stuff out by the highway and put a for sale sign, and you'd have people stop by wanting to buy fresh, fresh produce. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Miss Janice says, hi, better late than never. You got that right, girl. Um, 
So I just have memories of that. It's, oh, yes, yes, serious gardening. Oh, my goodness. We had chickens. We did have a cow once. Oh, Y'all, I still feel the pain of it all to this day, and I'm 55 years old. That thing scarred me, and it wasn't one garden. We had, like, multiple patches, but I will tell you, one of my favorite memories is when we picked the apples, and we'd peel them and slice them, and my grandmother would put them out on old screen doors out on this slope that we had out back side of the house of their house and they lived right next door and let those apples dry in the sun your dread was tobacco oh hey miss ruth ann yes girl the tobacco thankfully i never had to do tobacco but the garden thing it scarred me for life and i never have had a garden now i have messed with tomato plants like just very 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 few and sometimes in a flower pot, but <laughs> no, no, no real garden to speak of. So, all right. So I'm going to get to work on this. Uh, yes, Linda, that is absolutely true. You are so right. It was survival. My grandmother um, was retired. My mother worked some, but that's how they saved money with the garden and putting all of that up and I mean it tasted good but it was horrible to work in <laughs> and it's so hot in Kentucky oh, miserable and that's why we would have to get up early in the morning while it was as cool as possible um, oh, I think I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush I just happened to think about that as I was getting ready to paint I thought that's not going to go well I'm going to use more of a round brush to lay in these darker tones initially Healthy food is right. Oh, and your plants are in pots. Yeah, that's a good idea. They're a lot easier to take care of. Not as much weeding that way. Oh, the hose and the worry of the snakes. Oh, I'm just, y'all, I'm not kidding you. I'm scarred for life. All right, so what I'm going to do first is just paint in some deeper recesses of these, um, this weave. I want to get that effect. And if I've got something misplaced, I'll just go back and kind of just finagle it. And don't you like that fancy word, finagle? I'm going to finagle it. I want to go, I'm going to turn this real quick because I want to get right up under this band. And I'm trying to be a little more precise with my my line. I actually think, yep, I just got my hand in wet paint. I didn't um, paint the correct thing first. And we'll get that all smoothed out. So, let's see here. Because that's going to go over and that one's going to go under. Okay. Try to think about how the different weave things. I just kind of sketched this in when I was uh, for placement when I first started this. So I probably will wind up changing some of this. Maybe I should go ahead. Let me let me do that. You don't have poisonous snakes in Cincinnati. Just black snakes or gardeners. <laughs> oh, we all we've got water moccasins and. A little bit of everything. We don't have rattlesnakes, I don't think. Um, the water moccasins is the cotton mouths. Um, to me, all snakes are poisonous. I'm just here to tell you. They, ugh. oh my goodness, y'all. I also have this memory of my granddaddy. He now, my granddaddy was a big guy. Ruth Ann Henson Reeves. It's on here. She she'll know this to be true because she she's from where I where I'm from. And my granddaddy was a big guy, tall, stout, like he wasn't really, he wasn't fat. He was just big, a big man. And he, if there was a snake in the yard, he could go up and grab that snake by its tail and whip it around and then pop it. And that head would snap off. I have seen him do it. Of course, 
my granddaddy died when I was 15. So I was a kid, but that made an impression. I mean, you just don't forget that. <laughs> uh, granddaddy was a, he was a tough guy. So LBL had rattlesnakes, laying between the lakes. Wow. Ooh. I want no part of them. I'm going to, y'all, I'm going to get a little bit of this light mocha that I use to kind of sketch all this out. I'm going to lay in my bands on this basket before I get too far along and I mess up with this shadow thing because I've got to think about the weave. So let me, let me start with that. I've got my camera really close uh, so y'all can see what's happening a little bit better. So I'm just going to tuck right up in here. Yeah, it was a oh wow moment. I'm like, oh. So I'm just going to lay in this band. Goodness, growing up in the country, we used to make up all kinds of games. <laughs> my, my younger cousin, I have a double cousin. And he wound up being more like a little brother than a cousin. And <clears throat> he had, back in the day when you had three-wheelers, before, I mean, they weren't safe, but he had a, a little one, like it was a 70. Um, it, 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 was, it was more of a toy than anything. But anyway, he would bring his three-wheeler, because he lived right, we all lived right there together, my my family, you know, my grandparents, and my uncle, my double cousin's dad, and um, we all lived right there together. So he would bring his three-wheeler up to our place, just right up the road, and we would make up games with that three-wheeler. And one of them was we would play hide-and-seek. And whoever was it was on the three-wheeler. And then the rest of us would go hide. Well, the way to win that is to go hide in the corn when the corn is really tall out in the garden. Like there was a whole garden full of corn. Y'all, I'm telling you, we had great vines. Oh my goodness, it was just endless. But anyway, and so whoever was it on the three wheeler then had to go find everybody else. And if he if he saw you, you were you were caught. But <laughs> You know, that's what's wrong with kids now. They don't have to make up games. Like, we had to make up games. And we had some of our best times. We had, like, a gravel pit also around, you know, you know I mean, I grew up on a farm. We had a gravel pit on our, our property. And it wound up being used a lot of times by a lot of people as kind of a dump. That was back in the days where they didn't have all the regulations and stuff that's there now. You can't do that anymore. But um, there, it was deep. And my parents didn't really like for us to go anywhere around it because we threw the, the trash that couldn't be burned. We would throw all that down in the bottom of the gravel pit. Well, we ventured into the woods and found this part of it that was like this really deep, steep slope. And we just sat on our rear ends and we would just slide down those dirt slopes and we had the best time ever. And we had friends over and we were like, bring your old clothes. We're gonna go sledding on that or sliding. And y'all, we just had the best time. Rena says, my granny would catch June bugs, tie a string around them and you had your own June bug fly. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my. Yes, Linda, we did, too. I mean, we didn't play in the woods a whole lot. But because, you know, the ticks and all that. Oh, they're so bad, y'all. Of course, that was before you knew anything about Lyme disease and all that. But, oh, lots of memories. Lots and lots of memories. Wow. My sister, I just have one sister. I don't have any brothers. So my double cousin was like the brother I, I never had. And it's just interesting. But yes, I do think that's a lot of what's wrong with kids today is they don't have to make up the games that we did. Because 
I was telling my daughter uh, the other day, they don't know what it's like to grow up with three stations on the television. You know, we had um, Channel 3 was ABC, Channel 6 was NBC, and Channel 12 was CBS, and then we had PBS. And that was all we had, and we got those by an antenna. And um, I would come home from school, and at 3.30, it was Gilligan's Island every day, and at four o'clock was the Brady Bunch. And that was it. And we only had cartoons on Saturday mornings. We lived for Saturday mornings where we could um, get up and watch. And then the cartoons were only on for half the day. It, they went off at noon. So when mom would want us to be doing chores, we were begging her, please, please let us watch the cartoons. It's going to be over, you know, and. Of course, there wasn't a lot of patience for that back then, but our kids now have cartoons 24-7 and all the stations that they're able to watch. It's just incredible. It's just a different time. Linda says, I remember I was back in the woods with my friend. She got herself in a hornet's nest. Oh, they chased her back to my mom's house. My mom was beating him off with a broom. I was running ahead of her screaming, stay away, stay. Oh, girl, that is frightening. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all, I'm going to, now I've kind of got that basic weave in there. I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, darker brown, and I'm going to mix it with this lighter brown to get another shade that I need to kind of be in between. So I'm trying to create my own color here. Usually it doesn't take too much of the dark. For some reason it's not. Um, there we go. Now it's coming through. A good mid-tone. All right. Let me ask y'all a question. Um, tell me if I do a workshop, what would be of interest to you to paint in that workshop? I want to know what y'all like. Got some really faithful viewers here, so I'm asking for your input. I mean, I can have all kinds of ideas all day long, and I can do what I like, but I want to—I want to do something that you like. And I'm blocking in these squares with this other color. And then I can add detail to this weave. An ocean scene. Where did I get the idea of painting? Girl, so... I don't know. I was looking at something. One of these other crafters, painters, people was saying that they saw that peaches were a really big thing this year. And I know if you, or I've heard, I don't go into Walmart a whole lot, a whole lot anymore. I do a lot of my grocery shopping online just because I don't want to take the time to walk through that store. Um, and they were talking about all the peach stuff that you see in the store now and that they thought peaches was going to be a really big thing. Well, I just got to thinking about that and not to do what's popular or anything, but I love the color of peaches and I just, it just sparked interest in me. So I just decided I would give it a whirl and 
they're really not that difficult to paint. The colors, I just, they're just beautiful. And I love peaches. I love peaches. Peaches. Colorful sea turtles, Marie says. Winifred says, ocean waves and a beach. Y'all are thinking summer. I'm thinking y'all are thinking vacation, aren't you? Y'all want to be in the vacation mode. That's what I'm hearing. That is exactly what I'm hearing. Y'all so funny. Okay, but that's some good input. No, I hear you. It's just funny. Y'all are all kind of saying the same thing. I think these girls need a vacation is what I'm thinking. They are wanting a vacation. Y'all, I want a vacation too. My vacation is in Alabama with my babies. Yep. Winifred says. Mandy says, I'm very. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. I'm so focused on my daughter and this baby coming and my granddaughter. I mean, I, I just can't mentally get there yet, but um, a friend of mine and and she just lost her husband earlier this year but we we've, we've been talking about we need to take a trip together and we've been talking about different stuff just I haven't been on a girl's trip and I don't know how long and um, we were just talking about how much fun that would be so I don't know We've both got a lot going on, so it might be a little while before we get to do that. But I tell you what we were thinking about doing is there is there was something on Facebook. One time I got a little over on that right there, but I can fix it. There was something on Facebook one time about a lighthouse trip, a specific um, path along the East Coast where you can hit about eight different lighthouses. And we thought, oh, wouldn't that be fun? So, I don't know. I don't know if we'll do something like that. I think we're going to have to wait and see kind of where we are at the moment. Because we both got so much going on. Okay, I need to add a little more over here. So, I'm going to pick up. Let me just clean this brush. So I have two cups here. One's got soap in it, so I can be sure and get my brush really good and clean. And then I have clear water in the second one that's a good rinse so that I can um, be sure I'm getting that paint off. All right, let me lay in this weave. And this bushel of peaches, it, I decided to do this because it reminds me of my raising growing up with all the things I just described to you guys. Hi, BJ. Yes. Winifred, I think it'll be fun too. These bushel baskets. So I'm just laying in this last little area and then I'm going to start adding detail. So did everybody see my note cards? I know we've got some that have joined a little bit later. I hope y'all don't get tired of hearing it. I'm, I would love to be able to sell some. I have had one order and I've only got 25 sets so I hope it's something that would be of interest to you. And the cool thing is if you don't want to send it as a as a card, you can frame them and have some little chapel decor. Get this little band through here. One thing I have a hard time doing, and I know I'm in a coaching group and they talk a lot about this is sales i mean even though that's what i do for a living when it comes to my art i feel a little different about it because y'all even in my job where i'm a salesperson 
I don't, I don't like to oversell people. Um, I'd rather build relationships. I'm a, I'm a relationship builder. And so that's why I'm like, I, I don't want to wear y'all out. But yet I need to talk about my stuff that I'm selling. It's kind of a catch-22. So, yeah, Winifred, let me show you. I've got a couple. Let me show you since some of y'all have joined late. Just real quick. So I've got my weave going on. And I'm going to start adding detail to this. But while we're kind of transitioning. So here's the first one. And they come in a set of two. They're five by seven note cards. They're blank on the inside. But they're not so shiny and slick that you can't write in them. Um, so there's the Springtime Chapel. And then the award winning Dogwood Chapel is on the front it's got my logo on the back jeremiah dreams right there um so this is a set of two and i have a post with the link to my etsy shop where you can find these and i just think they're so pretty y'all i just couldn't be more pleased and they are perfect for framing i mean they're just a great you don't even have to have a mat because there's enough edge left on here and you can just get a frame and just stick them in a in a frame by themselves Hey, Trisha. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Okay. Do I need to raise the camera a slight bit because it's cutting off? Let's see if I can do that without making y'all seasick. Because it seems really, really close. I've ordered another um, arm to hold the cell phone. So hopefully that will help things, but you know how that goes. All right. So I'm now ready, I think, to add in the shadow that I was talking about before. Um, I just got to think about how I'm going to do this. I was just pausing for a moment. It's still kind of wet right there. There's so meant to be careful. So I'm going to just go in and lay in some of this dark brown first. Got a little crooked. Got a water drop right there. So all this along the bottom needs to be dark where it's sitting. And I'm going to bring that darkness out just a little bit. make that line just a little bit thicker. Okay, I gotta think about this weave. So actually this, because that band is going under, so I'm gonna bring this down. Concentrating, y'all. Sorry, got quiet. Okay. You can't see the bottom of the picture. I'm sorry. There you go. It's so hard. I'm sorry. Linda says she doesn't. I know. Yes, Winifred, there's several different options on the on the Etsy 
site that lets you do payments several, several ways. So that should not be a problem. Is that better? Thank you, Winifred. Okay. One of these days, I'm going to have some really snazzy equipment. Y'all are just not even going to know what to think. I'm going to be so snazzy about it. You'll be like, whoa, she is finally making it in this world. I'm only kidding, y'all. Only kidding. So, this is going to look pretty um, cartoonish for right now. So, I get this weave in, and then we're going to go back in and really get some good shadow going on. And... Um, it's going to look a lot different. All right, so it's under, so on this one, it's going to be over. And put a line right here, bridge that gap. And I'm going to put another band in there too to tighten that weave up. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's an awesome idea. You are so right, Linda. Leather straps on this thing for handles. You got that right, girl. Let's see. Go that direction. So I picked up my granddaughter from daycare today. They're wanting her to stay in daycare even though I'm here helping because, I mean, while she's in daycare, I, I work from here and um, have makeshift office set up in their house. And um, I'm thinking. So when I picked her up today, she'd had a good day and she was all talking and chatty and so we get home and she wanted to swing and so we went outside to swing well then she said chase me mimi she wanted to play chase and i said oh my mimi doesn't run very well anymore um so but we we gave it our college try and when we she laughed oh my goodness and we got up in her tree house and uh which is just an extension of her swing set and we, she said, lay down right here, Mimi. So we were laying out on the on our backs at the top, and we were looking at the sky, and birds would fly overhead. And she was just so excited about those. And um, it was just cool to see her little imagination running. And so I tried to get her to think about the shapes the clouds are making, if she could see animals in the clouds. And... Um, it's just it was just a, a precious time and then we were blowing bubbles and um she was chasing them and they were beautiful and some of them would come out as double bubbles and we were on the watch then for the double bubbles and it was just a good time had by all but i'm tired <laughs> i'm just i'm tired <laughs> Oh my goodness, that child. And then we went for a walk after my daughter got home from work. 
we went for a walk to, uh, you know, I, I said I had to go to the mailbox to mail some stuff. And actually, I'm trying to get her to have that baby. <laughs> so Elena was riding her little tricycle and we were walking. But um, y'all, I'm about tired. My eyes are like. And I know it's because I played so hard with a three-year-old after her daycare day. And she was even tired. When they got ready to put her to bed, there was no complaining about going to bed tonight. She was like, I tired. I tired. <laughs> All right. So I tell you what, let's do. I'm going to let this pause for tonight. We're not going to get it done tonight because I, I tired. <laughs> So let's, um, oh, let me show y'all, those of y'all that came a little bit late, I'll show y'all what we were doing in my VIP group, because I think it's cool. So we were painting, get it around here, the the lesson this time, good night, Miss Emmy. Oh, Trisha, that is the truth, girl. So last night in our VIP group, we were painting, the, the lesson was to learn uh, how to paint glass and how to paint something that looked like it was in the within the glass and so i thought this was so cool how this turned out um i gave i'll show you i gave everybody a pattern like this to use to get the basic shape down and then i sent a picture of a jar for us to look at together so we'd all have the same image to look at the shape of the the different things going on there so that we could transfer it on there and get that effect. And I think it just really turned out very cool. I really like it. Now th there's no scene around this at all. It's just all about um, learning the technique and trying to get those effects with the shading and the blending and, and all of that. So I just want to share that with y'all. I thought it was very neat. I've got to do a tutorial for them on it still. But uh, it was a, it was a blast. All right, so we got to finish up names. I hadn't forgot. So if you'll hit that heart emoji and tell me, that would be amazing. And then if you will paint the blessings, that would be also amazing. Oh, thank you, Trisha. Yes, it was supposed to look like gumballs. Yes, yes, I did it. <laughs> that was exactly what I was going for, Linda. Oh, you know, sometimes you never know. Could have looked like balloons. Balloons in a jar. All right. So, paint the blessings. Hit the heart emoji. And then tell me in the comments. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And while y'all are telling me, I'm going to start folding up names and getting them ready. Because I need to send more happy mail. I tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll give you another opportunity if you will paint the blessings again and hit the heart emoji again. I'm gonna put your name in here again for each one because I just want to. And I can because I want to. So Sue Copeland, oh wait, you misunderstood, thought you were leaving when you said you were tired. I just walked back in the room. Well, I'm a girl. So I'm, I am not, I'm going to, we're wrapping it up. I am um, doing the names for Happy Mail. Miss Sue, I got to write your name down. I'm not forgetting. So here comes Linda. She's going to, we're going to do her again. Hang on. Folding paper. I need some more little. Am I out? Oh, no, there they are. I thought, I don't think I'm out. Here we go. We're in business. Okay. So, Miss Sue. All right. Heartfelt hearts. Oh, I love that. 
So Miss Winifred. We need to bring some more girls in here with us. We have great conversations. Man, people don't know what they're missing out on. Winifred did hearts too. Miss Rena. All right. All hearts clear, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Last chance. Let me know. Because we're fixing the draw. Oh, Linda, I love you, girl, for being here. Yes, I want to bring more into these conversations. I mean, y'all got stories to tell. Other people got stories to tell. Y'all are so interesting. So, you know, we need more friends in here to tell us more stories and entertain each other, right? <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to draw a name. Y'all, my eyes are closed, so I'm just going to draw a name. And it's going to be this piece of paper right here. And who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I can't get a hold of it. <gasps> Teresa! Teresa Isles! Chicky! Hey, girl. I didn't realize you stepped out, but I'm glad you're back. All right, Miss Teresa. You got some happy mail coming your way. Be prepared. All right, y'all. Y'all are the best ever. The best ever. I just love hanging out with y'all. I just really do. So, I am going to wind it down. <laughs> Congratulations, Teresa. I will wind it down and go to bed. <laughs> I'm such an old woman right now. <laughs> All right, you guys, y'all have a blessed evening. Get some good rest and have a blessed day tomorrow. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Get some rest. You too, Miss, Miss uh, Winifred. Linda says, good night. It's late. Tana says, good night, sleep tight. I love you guys. I love you, Miss Chicky. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Okay, good night. Bye.